A young boy, bullied by those who were better off than him in a multitude of ways, began cultivating a deep hatred for those who had any amount of wealth. He grew up resenting them, and so, in September of 2003, that boy, now with a stacked criminal record, in a yellow raincoat and baseball cap, breaks into the home of a wealthy university professor and began exacting his revenge. Ooh. Sounds like a movie plot. <laughs> I might as well have been. All right. Well, welcome to Glenn and Friends. This is episode seven. We are very fastly approaching the end of season one, which is kind of mind blowing for I think all Whack. of us. What the heck? Yeah. How did we get here? How did we get here? And I'm honestly, I'm really proud of us that we've kept this going mm-hmm. and that we have. Me too. Um, you know, not done what podcasters call pod fade, which is you're really excited to start a podcast and you get like one or two episodes in and then after that you start to do the pod fade where Mm -hmm. you start maybe every once in a while you'll post an episode but not very consistent but you know we put out an episode every week except for our mid-season break so I'm very um proud of us for doing that. Me too. Look at us go. Guys, also, don't we have like 100 downloads now? That's pretty dope. Yeah, we have over 100 downloads on Buzzsprout, which is awesome. If you look at all of that evidence, you would think we're professionals, but I didn't even know Pod Fade was a thing. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I didn't know that's what it was called. But yeah. No, I, it's, I like it. Yeah, it's a podcaster term that I heard from watching too many podcasting videos. Pod Avoid fade. the Pod Fade, as they said. All well, right. We have successfully done so. We have successfully done that. So we're going to continue on with this episode obviously and Joe the shrink is going to present this case and uh next week will be our season finale and it's gonna be a doozy but we'll talk about we'll tease that later but for right now so okay this week um this episode this man is not necessarily close to home but he will be close to my home in the January of next year um, so this is a South Korean serial killer. Oh! oh. So, <laughs> y'all ready for this? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Let's get going. All right, so, Yoo Young Cho was born on the 18th of April uh, in 1970 in the Mapo district of Seoul, South Korea. And his family wasn't well off by any means. And so, uh, you know... Uh, he spent his childhood years being bullied because of his low social status, um, which is really unfortunate. Like, yeah. we hate to see yeah. it. The 70s well, this in is Korea the 70s. doesn't seem like a very good time. Yeah. yeah. He can't help that he's he's not super wealthy. That's not his fault. Uh, yeah. But, you know, kids, kids are brutal sometimes. That's very true. <laughs> but, um, unfortunately, this is where the seed of his hatred for the rich was planted, and it would only grow larger over the course of his life. Um, so even before becoming a serial killer, you had a criminal record. Uh, in 1988, he was arrested for theft. And then again, in 1991, he was arrested again for... Yeah, good job, Joe. (laughs) He was arrested for the same crime and spent 10 months in prison this time as a result. Um, and then in 1993, I bet you can't guess what he was arrested for. (laughs) Theft again. (laughs) Wow, I'm (laughs) shocked. I'm shocked. But this time he spent 18 months in prison, so... I love how you prompted us and we just laughed. <laughs> we're like, I bet you can't guess, and we were like, no, no we can't! We can't. <laughs> but anyway, we're off to a really good start here. Um, so by this point he's like 18, 19, he's like our age, yeah. kind of. Um, mm. So beyond the theft, uh, he was caught selling child pornography in 1995, um, so ew. And then he spent two more years in prison for theft, forgery, and identity theft in 1998. So, we're... we're, He's got quite the track record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And this is before all the murder happened, so... Yikes. He's a swell fella. So he definitely was involved with a lot of different crimes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. In 1991, around the time of his uh, first arrest for... uh, Thievery, I suppose. Thievery. Um, you married his uh, girlfriend, and like, how? D- why would anyone agree just to marry, agree this, to marry this man? That's I mean, a darn good question. Like, what a heckin' catch! Someone recent. <laughs> what a heckin' catch! <laughs> Someone recently arrested. Yeah, I'll marry you. Sure. <laughs> and he had a son with this girlfriend. Okay. Wow. Um, 
In 2000, then, he was arrested yet again, but this time for raping a 15-year-old girl. Oh. Did his wife stay with him? Um, I'll get there. Okay. Um, I'm I'm scared. He spent three years and six months in the slammer for that one. (laughs) Um, And I guess his wife had finally had enough, so there's that. Um, Because she divorced him on October 27th of that year. Which, good for you. Like, get your, like, take your son... Get, get out of there. Get out of that relationship. <laughs> you don't need to be there, honey. Um, Mr. Yu was released from prison on September 11th of 2003, and only 13 days later, he would commit the first of his murders. Listen, buddy. Listen. Take a break. <laughs> Calm down. Gee whiz. Okay. Um, when you began killing on the 24th of September in 2003, he began his revenge on the wealthy. Uh, He broke into the home of a wealthy couple and stabbed the homeowner, a 72-year-old university professor named Yi Dok-su, in the neck uh, with a knife. Oh Oh my my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's so... It's aggressive. That's so malicious. (laughs) And uh, to finish off his first murders, uh, Yu bludgeoned the professor and his wife, Lee Yoon-ok, who was 67, Mm -hmm. um, to death with a hammer and then staged the scene to look like a murder motivated by robbery, though nothing was actually ever stolen. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, you struck again on October 9th of that same year, forcing his way into another house and smashing an innocent grandmother's head in with his hammer. Did she have, did he know her? I don't think so. I'm just, it, just like a random old lady's house. Um, the wife of the homeowner her, uh, heard the commotion, um, <clears throat> ran down the stairs and encountered her mother's killer. Unfortunately for her, you didn't like this, as he kicked her in the stomach, demanding to know who else was home. Oh my gosh. Uh, For who knows what reason, the wife, who was 60, uh, told him that her husband and her son were upstairs. Uh, You bludgeoned the wife's skull and then made a beeline up the stairs to discover that her husband, fortunately or unfortunately, wasn't home, but her son, in fact, was and he forced the couple's disabled son to kneel down and then proceeded to hammer him to death. Oh my god. So we're seeing a theme here with the the hammer and the... Yeah. Yikes. Uh, He's oh like a god, family annihilator in a way. Yeah. Uh, also, no one ever did anything to you. No. He was just bullied as a child, which I'm not saying is which, an excuse. That's, yeah, no excuse, but like still. But like no one ever actually did anything to him. None of these people that, that I know of. Like there were there weren't very many details on like the whole bullying thing, so it could have been very aggressive, but at the same time, like you can't just go around and murder people. With no, you hammer. cannot. With a hammer. Like heavily, heavily violent crime. So violent. Yeah. Excessively violent. Yeah. Yeah. Unnecessary. Uh, another similar murder took place only a week later in which the wife of a millionaire was threatened by you with a knife after he'd broken in. Only this time, when he asked her if anyone else was home, she said, no, no one else is home. Uh, You dragged her to the bathroom, where he beat her to death with the hammer, and then left the home. Uh, Later, Yu Jun-hee, the wife, was found by her son, who was actually uh, at home at the time of the murder. Uh, So, (laughs) that's unfortunate that he had to find her like that, yeah. but I'm glad that she had the sense to say no, mm-hmm. no one else is here right now. Right. And then, finally, on November 18th, you forced his way into one final uh, home of the wealthy, where he would encounter a housekeeper who was holding the infant child of the homeowners. He showed his knife to her and demanded to know where the master bedroom was. When he found the room, he also found the father of the young child lying in bed. And, if you could believe it, you immediately hammered him to death. Um, What the heck? Common theme. After finishing off the father, you returned to the housekeeper and uh, forcibly took the child from her. Uh, He then placed the child on the sofa and covered it with a blanket. And the gender was never specified, so I don't know. Anyway, after fatally bludgeoning the housekeeper, you discovered that he'd accidentally cut himself while he was trying to open uh, the family safe. So, logically, I suppose, he set fire to the house to destroy any possible DNA evidence. And no one's caught this man yet? Not yet. Thankfully, though, the baby was rescued. Okay, good. I was okay, going to say, I was the baby die in that fire? No, the baby, oh. was, the baby was saved. Okay. No dead babies. Good. Good. Okay. Um, 
on December 11th of 2003, and we're towards like the end of his first year of aggressive crimes, <laughs> uh, uh, Yu's taste in victims changed like drastically. Uh, he began dating an escort girl who would eventually, inevitably, I guess, discover his criminal record and then told him to not ever see her again, which, like, reasonable, but because we know this absolute loser, we also know that this enraged him and motivated him to start killing again. Calm Thank down, you. homie. We Thanks, know you're Katie. upset, too. The Mleps <laughs> are not fans of this guy. They're distressed. There's a Mlep behind our TV. Cut it out. Homie, you're fine. Get down. <laughs> Come here, Come here, um, so this guy went on another spree beginning on February 9th of 2004, in which he killed a street vendor and set his van on fire. Oh my god! <laughs> um, and then he would go on to fatally choke a young woman, dismember her corpse, and dispose of her remains on a trail near Sogong University. Which sounds familiar Sir. to us, doesn't it? Um, and next oh. was... <laughs> Another street vendor for selling fake Viagra to him. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I know. Right He's actually bonkers. Um, finally, uh, in May of 2004, you lured an escort girl to his apartment where he would bludgeon her unconscious with his hammer and then decapitate her in his bathroom. Um, wow. Oh he gosh. smashed her head in after the fact, mutilated her body, and then buried the rest. And here's kind of the kicker, though. Uh, he went on and repeated the same method with at least eight more prostitutes and escorts. This at least eight. This man is insane. This is a lot. It's this a lot. is like Ted Bundy a lot. Yeah. Like And, like, it's all within, like, the span. These, these eight, at least eight women, were in the span of, like, a month. Or what? Two. Gosh, this a is escalation. Yeah. I, massive, wow. massive, massive, massive escalation. And then, okay, finally, two days after committing his final murder, uh, he was arrested after he'd raised suspicion by calling a massage parlor where several employees had recently gone missing after they'd received similar calls. Because I think you can, like, hire people to, like, come to your house, you know, give a massage. And right. That's kind of how he would pick... Victims. So he would hire oh, them. My okay. Goodness. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. He confessed to the killings, but then uh, he would escape custody after pretending to have a seizure. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> uh, okay. How do you? How, 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 will it? No idea how he managed that one, but uh, <laughs> thankfully he was captured again twelve hours later. Good. <laughs> um. Okay. This guy, he's insane. We obviously know that already. Yeah. Um, his court proceedings, though, were kind of... Like, there was no good way for me to, like, make a story out of it, so I just made, like, a little list of some of, of, some of the things this wackadoodle did um, when he was on trial. So, here we go. I don't even... A whole list. A whole uh, word. A um, whole it's list. A small, it's a small list, but this is, like, it's not a comprehensive one. This is just some of the ones that I found... Um, most interesting. Uh, How did you get away with that? Okay. Um, <laughs> he first appeared in court on September 6th of 2004, uh, where he apologized to the families of his victims, but also maintained that he had had no intentions of stopping if he hadn't been caught. Ooh, that's not an apology. <laughs> that's great. It's not an apology at all. Uh, and then two weeks later, at another trial, he launched himself at three judges. What? Three of them. In the same room? Se like, at separate trials? No, like, at the trial, there's, like, a... I think oh, the way the court system works, they're, like, judges at a table, and I'm not sure how many, It's like a panel of judges, okay. rather but, like, than he's three one. separate judges. Holy cow! Trying to attack them. That's and then, just great. It's, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. He's a real class act. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> uh, he was supposed to appear in court again on October 4th, uh, but then had attempted to kill himself the night before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Which, no. Um, anyway, he attacked a spectator three weeks later for cursing him, and after this incident, he then <laughs> agreed to, ca to not cause any more commotion in the courtroom. Uh, <laughs> gee, thanks. Wow, well, thanks. We really appreciate After all yeah. that, he finally said, you know, I think I'm done now. I think I'm thoughtful of you, sir. <laughs> um... But then on December 17th, 
he was finally found guilty and was sentenced to death. Uh, he was convicted on <clears throat> 20 counts of murder and is currently, to my knowledge, still incarcerated at the Seoul Detention Center to this day. Um, Good. Bye. <laughs> awaiting, uh, his, awaiting his death. Wow. So that was a lot. Just wow. Yeah. And, like, his signature was, like, he'd wear this yellow raincoat all the time, and so his nickname was, um, the Raincoat Killer, and he had, like, this baseball cap, and, uh... I wonder if it was to keep, like, blood. It could have been, because it would, like, wash off pretty easy. It would yeah. wash off pretty easy, and <clears throat> killing someone with a freaking hammer, there's gonna be yeah. blood all over the place. It's not exactly a clean killing. And I'm surprised. It's so, it's so, like, to kill someone with a hammer would take so much strength and yeah. effort. And just, like, you have to be so evil to just, to be able to do that. Exactly. Mm. That's And I'm, I'm just surprised that, um, like, the first time that he got any of his DNA anywhere was that time when he attacked the housekeeper with the baby because it would seem, I don't know, because, like, like, if any of these people put up a struggle, you would think there would be some sort of you'd think some sort of evidence. DNA left behind, like yeah. a hair or some, like, fingerprints of any sort, but I don't know. Skin under nails. Yeah. And yeah. Under scratching. But, yeah, you just don't know. That is a wild, <clears throat> wild case. That is and wild. So, he killed potentially more than 20 people, but was counted for 20 murders. Right. He that's was, so Ted, like, that's, like, beyond just, like, he confessed to, like, killing more, um, but they could only ever prove the 20 that he was, gotcha. um, convicted of. Gotcha. So. So he was quite prolific. Yeah. Wow. He, there was, okay, there was this movie, <laughs> speaking of the plot of the movie, it was this movie that came out in 2008 called The Chaser, um, about this you mean dirty that detective. New show on ABC or whatever channel about yes, Jeopardy that is contestants. Totally, that's totally it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but it's about this dirty detective who was like turned into a pimp. Um, oh, nice. And like he finds himself in financial trouble um, when several of his girls uh, recently disappear. Um, and so it's been like kind of connected that like the raincoat killer was the person who was abducting his his girls. So it was like loosely based around that the raincoat killer, but gotcha. didn't focus specifically on him. So I thought that was pretty interesting as well. How is this not more common? Like not common, popular. How is this not a more commonly known case here in the States even? Because that's intense. That's a lot. In that's like the span lot. of two years. Just two years. Like think about some of the serial wow. killers in America they went on for like tens uh, to 20 t 20 years worth of time yeah killing this man went on a rampage mm -hmm. like i i would be terrified if i lived in seoul my my thing is like i know how conservative korea is like still like as far as like trying to keep like their reputation under wraps and like yeah and korea is a very safe place to live I'll oh yeah that much incredibly but um I'm thinking, even, like, since it was such a long time ago, like, it was even more conservative than it is now, so they tried to do everything they could to just be like, okay, Conceal we're gonna it. keep yeah. this hush-hush, because while there were details about, like, his killings and, like, the names and ages of his victims, like, there's nothing really out there about this man specifically and, like, his mental health or, like, mm -hmm. where he came from, like, what his home life was like. They can't find anything on his parents. So, nothing? Like, like, close to nothing. Little to I, nothing. I would be so yeah. curious to see what his life as a child was like, just yeah. growing up. Not Especially that with the excuse. bullying stuff. <clears throat> yeah. The only thing I know about his childhood is that, like, he he wasn't well off. Yeah. He was pretty poor. Um, so that was, like, the cause for... His hatred of his, rich people? Yeah. Well off people? But it's almost like, it's just the fact that he was so angry. I think he was truly, that's truly evil, but... Like, the fact that he could kill an infant, or would be willing to. Like, he tried to. Like, he tried to kill that child. What did... Wh I mean, I don't think he went in necessarily with the intent to kill the infant, but, like, but because the fact that he didn't think to, like, oh, maybe I should move this baby so I don't burn it down with the house. Or, like, maybe it's a baby, 
they've done nothing in yeah. their life to warrant any sort of violent action. Right. They don't choose the family they're born into. Just like you didn't, sir. <laughs> and I guess <clears throat> I didn't include this in like my my write up, but uh, you would sometimes like <clears throat> excuse me uh, use a fake police ID to like try to win the trust of some oh, of the people wow. he was going to abduct. <sighs> and like the picture that it shows, it's kind of like you said, it's like a Ted Bundy situation where it was like. He was, like, fairly handsome or, like, average to handsome looking, and so I'm not saying that's, like, an excuse for anything, but, like... But looks can But, like, be looks can sway people, and, yeah. like, the like the perceived authority of a person makes you trust them a little bit more. Super deceiving. Very. Yeah. Well, if we can, I'll try and post that picture on our social media so that the listeners, you, can hear it. Or, hear it. See it. That's <laughs> what I meant to say. Hear it. See it later. Um, but, wow. This is a wild, wild case. And, you know, thinking about it and looking at somebody like comparing him, this killer, to somebody like a Ted Bundy or something like that. Mm -hmm. With Ted Bundy, obviously, he's got the horrible, horrible childhood with his mom um, being so young that she lied to him and said that his grandparents were actually his parents mm -hmm. and that she was his sister and that screwed him up really Ooh. bad. So I can imagine there might be something very similar with his childhood. Uh, you know, not mm -hmm. something like to the extent of it's the exact same situation, but, but something traumatic, you yeah, know what right. I mean, that would have caused this to be very elevated, this feeling of, like, I can't, I'm stuck in this thing, and for him to have so much hatred and anger towards a certain group of people. It honestly, okay, it reminded me a little bit of Parasite. Not I was gonna say! Not necessarily, like, that main character guy. I mean, like, he eventually lost it and, yeah. you know, went crazy, but, like, it also reminded me of, like, that guy, you know, they keep him in the basement. Yeah. yeah. Like, a mix of, like, the main character and that guy. Yeah. You just, like, smush them together and you get you young chul. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, Parasite focused on the di the difference between mm -hmm. a wealthy family and a poor family mm -hmm. and what that looked like in a, in a more psychologically freaky way mm -hmm. and it just I don't know I mean there is that class difference that can right. cause people to <clears throat> hold grudges against people who've done nothing to them yeah. and yet still they feel like they are owed something or they're entitled to something and they never got that thing mm -hmm. well and here's the thing too like Korea is a small country. Like, it's the size of Ohio-ish. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit bigger. But, like, you can get anywhere in Korea within, like, the span of three hours or so. Wow, that's um, crazy. So, so while, at, like, while all of these murders happened around, um, like, this in the Seoul area, like, just know, like, the rest of Korea knew this was happening, and so yeah. they knew that this guy could potentially be anywhere in the country within three hours, so really no so one scary. was... Feeling safe. Feeling safe. A whole country being that's like afraid a of one country. man in a raincoat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so freaky. It's wild. A yellow raincoat. A ye also, that's the thing. That's so specific, and that's such a dead giveaway. If some someone sees you and they right. know about the rain raincoat killer, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, there he is. Like, that oh, what? definitely presents almost like an egotistical vibe to this guy, where yeah. he was... He right. was bold and not afraid to continue. Oh, for sure, this. for sure, bold. Because, like, like I said, like f during his trial, he's like, "I'm sorry, but like, also, if I hadn't been caught, I would have just kept going." So, I'm just sorry, so you know, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> sorry, but I don't regret anything, and I would keep doing it if I could. Like, that's there's not kind of a piece of shit. Honestly, sorry, f excuse my French, <laughs> but like for real though, like yeah. for piece, real, a piece of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I don't even know what... He crazy, though. He's, that's, it's just so evil. It's so malicious. Yeah. It's very it's very evil, and it, it definitely, like, leaves, like, a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach where I'm just like, how can someone be so motivated to kill in such a horrific way? Mm. You know, and clearly his modus operandi is not something that is easy to understand. There is almost always a weird um, element of like pent up anger when someone decides to kill in this very very violent way mm -hmm. Mm 
rather than like using a gun or something it's far far more like you have to be far more motivated to choose to kill somebody with a hammer which will probably take longer to kill them and also mm-hmm. take more effort so yeah it's here's, here's not fun thing, to though. think about like he was he was born in 1970 in, in April, so we're coming up on his birthday here pretty soon. So this guy, like, he's by no means young, but he's also not, like, decrepitly old. Like, he's almost right. 51 years old. Yeah. And if he, if, like, the death sentence has been, hasn't been carried out yet, like, he's still in there, very much so alive. hmm And it makes me feel itchy. Yeah. No thanks. No oh, thank you. Man. No thanks. Well, that is... That's that. That's that case. <laughs> I'm kind of reeling still. I really yeah. want to look into this deeper and see if there's anything else we could find because this is so intense and it's I've never heard of this. It would be really interesting to see a documentary made on this. Mm-hmm. Such a big one. Mm-hmm. Someone should like a original Night Stalker type vibe. For those or, of you who like to make documentaries, yeah. make a documentary. Hint, <laughs> hint, <laughs> take notes. Hint, hint if you're listening. You know, so, similar to the style of um, uh, what's the recent one they did? The Night Stalker one on Netflix is really good, but also the one they did for the UK killer, um, The Ripper, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. in the 70s. That one was really good, so I could definitely see this being covered in a documentary quite well, and it would be very intriguing. It would be so It'd interesting. Be so good. Yeah. I would love to watch. I'd, I'd love, love to, to find out more. more about his childhood. Yeah, yeah. especially his family life. Mm-hmm. His yeah. growing up life. Same. Because obviously he was able to woo someone and get married and have an actual child which is crazy i would love to talk to his child oh my gosh that, yeah. poor, that, that poor kid that kid might not want to talk about it but yeah. yeah he um, might not even remember a lot of true father, yeah true. all right well thank you so much for listening to episode seven of our podcast we will be back with episode eight like i said the season finale and it is going to be a doozy one we're going to be talking about a big case One that you may have heard about before, and I'm excited to discuss it. We're pumped. (laughs) But yeah, so uh, make sure to tune in for that. That'll come out um, next week, and that will be the season finale. But as for right now, this is Glenn and and friends.